So Dan, I just want to talk a bit about leading change and why it's had such a positive reaction from the participants. And for me, there's a fundamental shift in the world of business today, away from what we call human capital, knowledge and expertise, and towards social capital, which is really the ability to get things done through other people. And so the question really it leads to is where does change happen in organizations? And increasingly, it's not top down. So a little bit about your point of view on this. Yeah, that's great. Um, it seems to me in teaching this over the last, whatever, 15 or 20 years, the most seismic shift has been away from an approach to change where a senior leader or a very small leadership team gets the big idea, the transformational idea, and then cascades that down, maybe over two years, so that lots and lots of people gradually develop an awareness of the strategy. And it seems to me the big emphasis is now on executing quickly, learning where it's not going to work, having people who work with customers directly, understand what the customers need, start suggesting the changes, owning the changes. So one of the most exciting things for me in this is more about capturing hearts and minds. So hearts meaning that they want to achieve it, not just that they know what the change is cognitively, and in terms of the minds, that they are coming up with on the ground innovations, not just waiting to be told what the innovation is. Yeah, I think that, that, that for me captures it well because I, for me, the great organizations today are the ones where every person in every role at every level in the hierarchy understands yeah. what we're trying to do, why this organization's here, and really feels that they can actually participate in that process. And so I think the way we've structured this course where it is very interactive, where you have a wide range of different types of engagement, simulations, case studies, uh, you know, video case studies, uh, really practicing communication skills, uh, for me really gets uh, into how we can actually give the people on the program the skills to be effective agents of change. That's right. That's right. Some of it is around topic area and some of it's around methodology. I think they're both really exciting. I mean, part of it is there are a set of things that you need to know a lot about when trying to create a sustainable change. And the idea that we would cover those in a content valid way. You know, we are social scientists who study this for a living, but we also work with companies who practically have to put these ideas into place. I think that we're hitting the content dimension but I think the making it interactive and fun, making it sticky so that they themselves, the participants feel what has to change and why it isn't working now. The fact that they have to stand and try a communication or try to communicate purpose and get some feedback on that. The idea that you take part in a role play or a simulation where you have to make decisions in real time and bring a team with you. I think these are the sorts of things that'll stick with people, not just for the th few days after they leave the program, but maybe for years as they practice and become better. And that for me is the most exciting thing about it, is when we catch up with people six months after the program, just hearing just how much impact it's had. And I think you also raise for me a really important point, which is that um, both of us aren't just social scientists studying this in terms of really understanding what are the aspects of an, an effective change process. Uh, we really do work with organizations, and I've worked for 20 years now, coaching senior executives, working with senior management teams, actually helping them do that. So bringing that practical knowledge, practical experience into the classroom, and really combining that with the uh, more academic content is for me one of, the, one of the really crucial things that makes this program successful. Yeah, that's right. There's one last thing I would say about this. We have an extremely diverse group of people in that room, and right now I'm playing in my mind what it feels like when you have people from 15, 17 different cultures, 26 different countries. What change means when you have to capture the hearts and the minds? Well, that's going to depend in some way. If you're talking about Brazil or China, and the idea that we have the right topics and themes and exercises that allow those international differences and those cultural differences to emerge, I think it would be very hard to replicate that anywhere where you didn't start with that diversity in the room. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree.